Hello everyone, this is Michael Tarallo, Pre-Sales Director with Pentaho Corporation, and as promised, I'm continuing that series with helping you evaluate Pentaho 3.6 GA, Enterprise Edition, and I want to take this time to cover adding data sources where you might want to connect to particular databases in your environment. This example is going to cover connecting to an Oracle database and a uh, SQL Server database, some of the two uh, most common data sources that uh, we encounter when evaluating Pentaho. And I wanted to make it clear that in order to connect to these systems, you do have to obtain the JDBC driver from the vendor. Uh, Pentaho does not provide all of the JDBC drivers for all of the relational database vendors that are out there. Um, so you must obtain the driver from the vendor's website. Um, or from the installation of the software. So to give you an example, if I navigate to my Windows Explorer, you will see there's a section here and for Oracle, if I navigate to the Oracle installation, and you can see there is a JDBC directory and then a live directory, there's the odbc 14jar file. That is the JDBC driver provided by Oracle for the, this particular version of the server, which is Oracle Express. So what we're going to do is just copy that jar file to an area in the Pentaho installation to make it available to the Pentaho server and to the Pentaho design tools. So what I'm going to do is take this perspective from the Windows operating system and also the Linux operating system. So in the series in the beginning in part one we installed everything on a Linux operating system. So I'm going to also copy the drivers to the location of where the design tools were on Linux. But to complete this example you'll notice that when we install Pentaho there is a folder underneath the location where you install it called design tools. And that could be referenced under program files, Pentaho design tools, or wherever you chose to install Pentaho. You'll notice that there are a number of different design tools. Each tool has a specific function. I'm not going to get into each of these just yet. That will be part of the series that we will cover. Um, but for example, we're going to use the Pixel Perfect Report Designer for operational enterprise reports. So you would go to the Report Designer, and then you would go to the Lib Directory, JDBC, and you would paste that particular driver in this location here. And that would make that driver available into the Report Designer tool. And then you can repeat that for the Metadata Editor, and that would be under Metadata Editor, Live External, JDBC. And you can paste that in there as well. And we could also do that for the Schema Workbench that would be under schema workbench drivers and you can see we have that in there already and then finally for data integration under live external JDBC now some distributions of our product already include these drivers so don't be surprised if you happen to see some of the drivers in there um, we are making some changes um, to basically include only a handful of the drivers and then the responsibility is on the person evaluating the software or the prospect or customer uh, to basically obtain the proper driver. Uh, in the future we're going to make this uh, a little bit more seamless but for this current release you need to obtain the JDBC driver and copy it to those locations. Now for the new installation um, I have a program called WinSCP uh, which basically allows me to attach to the uh, Linux operating system through a secure shell interface and here I could actually just navigate to the user directory where we installed Pentaho and that was going to be under the home directory vadmin Pentaho design tools and then I could repeat that same process for the Linux operating system so report designer lib jdbc and then I could navigate, grab my drivers appropriately. Okay, so you understand that is the areas where you will copy the JDBC drivers for the design tools. 
Now we also have the server location to keep in mind and that's where you copy these drivers to a couple of areas to the BI server. So when you install Pentaho for the BI server component you're going to have the Pentaho directory server and then BI server EE Tomcat common and live and here's where you will copy all of the jar files that are necessary for your database so what you can see here in this installation already I have the Oracle driver and then I also have the uh, SQL JDBC 4 driver which is for my SQL Server 2008 uh, Express and then any other drivers such as uh, Postgres or MySQL are also in this installation so that is copying the JDBC driver or moving the JDBC driver to the BI server component once again that is under Pentaho server BI server EE Tomcat common and live okay again these are all in the installation instructions in the knowledge base but again the tutorials just to help you get uh, you know up and running very quickly now there's one more location um, to install the Pentaho um, to install the JDBC driver and that's in the enterprise console and so the enterprise console can be aware of configuration when you want to configure it through the enterprise console that would be under Pentaho server enterprise console JDBC and there you copy the drivers as well okay so just to reiterate that path Pentaho server enterprise console JDBC once those jar files are copied into that location um, the next step you can then restart the services and I'm going to show you how to do that in Linux so what we're going to actually do here is just finish up that example through WinSCP by copying the drivers to connect to my local instance of Oracle and SQL Server so here for Pentaho server BI server Tomcat common lib and I'll grab my Oracle JDBC driver and bring that over and at the same time I'll grab my SQL Server JDBC 4 driver from my Microsoft SQL Server I'll copy that over as well and then we'll do the same thing for the Enterprise Console grab my Microsoft SQL Server driver and my Oracle driver okay so that's basically it copying the drivers to those particular locations and then restarting the service uh, since we started out with the uh, Ubuntu Linux installation what we're going to do is go to the uh, Ubuntu VMware image that I have set up here and I'm going to go to a terminal session and in this terminal session I'm going to basically navigate to the installation of Pentaho and I'm going to show you the startup script that is available there uh, CTL script.sh so this is the control script that basically executes the Pentaho uh, Tomcat server the MySQL repository um, and the enterprise console service so what I like to do is always check to see if my services are running so I do a PS dash EDF pipe and grep for Java and that basically just show me that there are no Java processes running in this environment and then next what I can do is dot slash ctl script dot sh start uh, if you don't put in any switches at the end it'll provide you the list of the switches so if you just hit enter it'll show you the screen and you can stop the individual services in this case if we do start it's going to start all of them so you'll get messages of the uh, SQL server MySQL server I mean that we uh, include for the repository and then also the Tomcat and the enterprise console okay so now the BI server is started um, the next step we can do is begin configuring a data source uh, on the back end there are a couple other ways of doing this uh, Pentaho's new agile BI uh, perspective inside our data integration tool uh, will actually publish the data connection uh, for you when publishing models um, but I'm going to show you the, the manual way of setting up the, uh, the, the, the connection to these 
new database structures. Okay, and to do that, I have a note that I have that basically covers the connection information for the appropriate drivers. Again, this is information that you would obtain from the DBA, uh, obtained from the, the vendor's website. Um, the actual driver name or driver package that you see here, what we also call driver class, that will be exposed to you in the Enterprise Console. So I'm going to show you that. But the actual driver URL, um, which is this area right here, that you need to know. And you can pretty much search Google to find that. Uh, we do provide that in our documentation. Um, but just know that this is something that is usually provided by uh, your DBA. So what I'm going to do here is open up um, Firefox browser. And we're going to connect to the uh, Enterprise Console that we have set up here. And I believe that port is running on 8089. Let me see here. Okay, so localhost 8089. Username is admin. If you haven't changed it during the installation, password, I use password. And this will bring us to the uh, administration console. So what we're going to do here is select administration, database connections, and then we're going to click the plus symbol. Let me just give you a little bit more field of view here by shutting down some of these things here. Underneath database connections, you're going to click the plus symbol. And the reason for setting up these connections is to use what's called the Pentaho data source connection, or also known as, uh, in some of the tools, JNDI. Uh, it basically offers a way of just specifying the connection name when publishing a, a report or object instead of actually specifying the credentials, the driver URL, and etc. Um, so this is why you set up these type of database connections. Uh, do note that the report designer and metadata editor do allow you to set up um, inline connections that can be published without having to do this. Um, but this is a pretty much a standard best practice for setting up uh, server-side data source connections. So here we provide a name. I'm just going to call this Oracle uh, XE. And that could be any name that you'd like. And then the driver class will then be exposed. When you copy in those jars, you'll see that I have my Oracle driver and I also have my Microsoft driver. So in this case, we'll just select the Oracle driver. And you, you'll notice that it does provide two of them. Uh, both of them really don't make a difference. There might be some differences. You can, you know, those are vendor specific. And username is whatever credential is set up in Oracle. So here I have Pentaho user and password that's been previously set up. And then I'm going to go into my notes and I'm just going to grab the URL connection here. And I'm going to paste that in here. And then I'm going to access the Oracle system that is on my um, guest uh, host operating system. I'm on a VMware image guest, so I'm going to put in the host name that this machine has access to. Okay, so I already have it in my buffer, so I'm just going to paste it in 192.168.2.129. That's my local host um, machine or the host operating system that the VMware guest can actually talk to. And you can see if I click test, the connection is successful. Okay, so that's setting up the connection to Oracle XE. Now, setting up the connection to Microsoft, SQL Server 2008, again, just as simple. Put in the name, we'll call this MSSQL2008. From the driver class window, com.microsoft, SQL Server, JWC, SQL Server driver, username, and password. And then again for the URL, here is the URL. for SQL Server 2008. And then once again, changing the host name to that of the host operating system. 192.168.2.129.
and you can see this uh, connection is successful. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, adding two server-side data sources, uh, one to Oracle and one to SQL Server 2008 uh, on that Ubuntu Linux installation that we did. Um, just to reiterate, we copied the drivers over to the appropriate locations, restarted the services, and then went to the admin console to configure that. Uh, in the next part of the series, what we're going to do next is then use the design tools um, from my uh, Windows uh, version. So in other words, we'll have like a distributed installation where the Windows installation will access the BI server um, on the Ubuntu Linux image. That is technically how people do set up the installation. Um, some also just set it up locally uh, where you could access everything locally as well. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you to you and um, look forward to speaking with in person and look forward to the next part uh, shortly.